there are two toxins very important toxins which catabolize the snare proteins and if snare proteins are catabolized can vesicle release their content no. so neurotransmission will fail due to dysfunction of presynaptic membrane exocytosis process again there are toxins once they enter into these nerve endings right they, what they, they can do they catabolize do proteolysis of snare proteins and that will result in failure of exocytosis in nerve endings and failure of neurotransmission now those toxins which i'm going to tell those toxins thanks god are not taken up by adrenergic nerve endings they are taken up by some other nerve endings okay let me explain they are let me explain first first normal and then abnormal actually i will tell you the name of those toxins botulinum toxin and tetanus toxin but they work in a very different way i will not go into detail but i will tell their mechanism of action how botulinum toxin produces flaccid paralysis and how uh, tetanus toxin produces spasticity it's very strange that if i get botulinum toxin my body will become flaccid and if you get tetanus toxin you will become spastic how it happens uh, let me explain this happens to be your let's suppose spinal cord right and here are alpha motor neurons right and let's suppose the alpha motor neurons are here attaching uh, attacking what is this muscle neuromuscular junction is that right now in these neuromuscular junctions on skeletal muscle these are the vesicles which are loaded with acetyl choline when action potential comes these there is exocytosis acetyl choline is released and that acetyl choline leads to generation of action potential in the muscle membrane and eventually contraction is that right cholinergic transmission at neuromuscular junction is that right now here are which proteins snares, snares. snares. which snares these are v snares and these are t these are v snares and these are t snares so what really happens botulinum toxin it absorbed from gat what botulinum toxin botulinum toxin absorbs from gat go to general circulation from the general circulation this toxin is botulinum toxin right this toxin is this toxin is specially concentrated in which cells cholinergic nerve endings not adrenergic right if you put here botulinum toxin it will not enter into this nerve ending but if you put the botulinum toxin with cholinergic nerve endings at neuromuscular junctions they will rapidly take up and they are stupid why because once they take up the botulinum toxin botulinum toxin is like a scissor it cuts the proteins and which proteins botulinum toxin will basically act as a special type of scissor molecular scissors and they will cut down snare proteins so at neuromuscular junction at the cholinergic endings cholinergic endings concentrate what botulinum toxin and this toxin enter into cholinergic nerve ending and cut down do proteolysis or destruction or catabolism of snare, snare proteins and now if action potential come do you think vesicle can release its content no. so what happens there is failure of neurotransmissions and muscles become flaccid and paralysis and muscles become weak and paralyzed is it clear this is how botulinum toxin but tetanus toxin is a little more tricky 
Who will tell me the how the tetanus toxin works? Yes. How the tetanus toxin works? Yes. Very good. Actually, tetanus toxin, very good. Tetanus toxin, right? Tetanus toxin is also taken up by these nerve endings, right? But a part of it will go retrograde upward. Very good. And that will reach to the spinal cord. Then what, what will happen? Yes. Actually then, listen, listen. From here it will be released out. Right? And here are neurons. These are special inhibitory interneurons. These are these neurons. Let me show it here. These neurons. New, these neurons actually have inhibitory neurotransmitter. Either they are having gamma aminobutyric acid, GABA, we call them GABAergic neurons, or the other neurons similar like this, they have glycine. And that is called glycinergic neurons. So what happens? That tetanus toxins enter on the cholinergic nerve endings. From there, it will retrograde, move through exoplasm, and reach to the spinal cord or brain stem. There, they will be diffuse, they will diffuse in into or enter into inhibitory interneurons, which may be gabergic or which may be glycinergic. And after entering into this, what they will do that this is the vesicle and they will also act as a scissor for snare proteins. Right? What has entered here? They have entered here and in this botulinum toxin, sorry, 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 tetanus toxin that will uh, act as a molecular cutter and destroy this. When these proteins are destroyed, do you think this inhibitory interneurons, which are gabergic neurons or glycinergic neurons, can they release inhibitory neurotransmitter? No. Normally, now listen very carefully. Normally, alpha motor neurons have an auto tendency to fire. They have auto tendency to fire normally physiologically. And normally these are interneurons, inhibitory interneurons which normally keep these over firing under control. Again I will repeat. In a normal person physiologically alpha motor neurons have a tendency to over fire. But this tendency to over fire is physiologically Kept, kept inhibited by the action of gabergic or glycinergic neurons, right? So that alpha motor neurons don't overfire. Now, what alpha motor neurons have done? They have taken the tetanus toxin, they have transported to the center of a system and presented to the gabergic or glycinergic nerve endings. And glycinergic or gabergic nerve ending has concentrated this toxin, and this toxin inside these cells digest away the snare proteins and th these gabergic or glycinergic inhibitory neuron lose the machinery for exocytosis. So these inhibitory neurons fail to release their neurotransmitter. There is there's no release of GABA or glycine. So we say that in spinal cord and the brain stem uh, tetanus toxin leads to failure of firing of inhibitory neurons. When this inhibitory neurons fail to fire, then alpha motor neurons have a natural tendency to overfire. So they will overfire and produce spastic paralysis or spasticity. Is that clear? So again, I will repeat. It's worth repeating. <coughs> Botulinum toxin is a simple, very simple, not very tricky. It will simply enter into cholinergic nerve ending that neuromuscular junction and destroy the snare proteins or proteins involved in exocytosis there and cholinergic neurotransmission fail at neuromuscular junctions and flaccid paralysis occur. But if we talk about another patient uh, who, is, who is having tetanus toxin like tetanospasmin, 
that you nerve know, toxin will enter into nerve ending part of that will go retrograde over many days and then it reach to the central nervous system there it will diffuse into inhibitory interneurons like gabergic neurons and glycinergic neurons and then in those nerve endings these toxin will do proteolysis or catabolism or destruction or cutting off snare proteins so gabergic and glycinergic neurons fail their neurotransmission so these inhibitory neurons fail to keep the alpha motor neurons under check so now alpha motor neurons are free of this inhibitory influence so they overfire and when they overfire muscles undergo spasticity is that clear